Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omar and today I will review the fifth studio album by the progressive rock, fringe, metal-ish band, whatever they are, Tool. Fear Inoculum, their fifth studio album, their long-awaited, you know, fifth album. Finally here, I think, yeah, it's almost a month ago at this point. I actually reviewed this album a week ago, but I'm not happy with that review right now because I, I do think that it's it's a good video, I do like it. But my opinion on this album has really changed, you know, since I first heard it. I, I've heard it the second time right now, and as you could see with that intro, oh yeah, I don't I don't like this album at all. It's yeah, it was I actually see right now that it was recorded in March 2018 up until January of 2019. So Tool literally didn't record anything for 12 years. So I do think that you know if you see this, if you see these statistics, you see that Tool hasn't recorded anything in 12 years, you know. Adam has come up with riffs, Danny with drum fills, Justin with bass licks, and you know, Maynard with lyrics but the problem here is that the band didn't function together anymore that's the fucking problem here and the problem is that the band used to be you know um a kind of tight group together they're still tight on this album but it's different it has changed there's too much time you know too much time has happened uh you know over the band since that initial impact of the band you know with that Alama lateral 10,000 days impact and undertow on a degree but I like but I like undertow way more than I do this album so there you go undertow although it's pretty much the weakest tool album from before this thing came out it you know it still had kind of a personality it's you know it's had a lot of personality actually it was very dark very bleak, very, you know, really appealed to me because it was such a dark album. And the singles on there, Sober is iconic, Prison Sex is like one of the most edgy singles ever, love that shit, Bottom is catchy as hell, Intolerance is a great opening track. All these tracks, they, they're great and they don't go on forever like this album does. You know, I don't hate this album, but you know, it's not an all time or it's like not an album of the year category i almost want to say it's like well let's not quite go there but well you probably know which way i'm going right now with the, with this review so there you go the album has seven tracks in the physical version so if you get the cd you just get like all the all the long tracks with the with the instrumental and if you get the digital version you you get it on spotify you actually get three extra tracks which are interludes and spoiler alert they're really bad i fucking hate all these interludes uh fear inoculum is the opening track the title track and actually when i first heard this when i was just like riding my bike and whenever the new single dropped not yet the album but just the single i listened to this track and i was like hey this is actually pretty good but that was mainly because i i didn't hear a tool track for show or i didn't you know um there was no new tool tool music for so long i was like i want a new tool song right now and fear inoculum came to the rescue or you know kind of made me happy that that was kind of this initial impact for me that you know there is a new tool single i was like oh yeah i like it but now that i listen i've heard it like three times right now and for me this track gets weaker and weaker every time i listen to it the first time i was like oh yes a new tool song but the second time i was like it's still good, but I do prefer the other songs on the album, which I still do. And then I heard it for the third time and I was like, it, this is pretty much like the weakest tool opener yet. Like, Vicarious is so amazing. The Grudge is like, oh, such a fucking eargasm. Heard it in the shower today. I, yeah, like I said, eargasm. Sting, I mean, Stink Fist, holy shit. I mean, Tool has so many amazing opening tracks, man. Those three singles alone are like three of their best singles. And then you hear this song and you're like, breathe in, breathe out. You know, those lyrics, you know, Maynard, I love Maynard, but 
He is so out of his element, the whole band. Like, well, especially Maynard, I would say. He, he, he sings really weak on his album, I think, and his lyrics are kind of off, I think, on, you know, as in the, also as in the new Perfect Circle record, but I actually really like A Perfect Circle, that new album, and, you know, kind of uh, the Pussifer album. I do think that those albums are pretty good, but I, something is not clicking with me with this album. I, yeah, I think that Pussifer, you know, still was relatively the same, you know, that's pretty much the least troublesome band at this point. Perfect Circle, they had a long, you know, that also had a long wait, but when they came back, they pretty much just had the same formula with the first two albums, you know, the songs were still relatively the same, relatively the same length. And they just, you know, they just continued, but the songs were weaker. But I still think that's a good album. But with this album, every fucking song is over the 10 minute mark. What made Third Eye and Disgustipated and Rosetta fucking stone, what made those songs so special was that there was like only one or two 10 minute tracks on the Tool album. And that was the epic. That was the, the grand, the cherry on top. That was the grand track. In the grand finale almost it was just an epic track it was amazing and with this album everything is above the 10 minute mark except for the for the chocolate chip trip bullshit that song um yeah so fair inoculum pretty mediocre i think it's pretty much the weakest tool opener yet together with intolerance i would say but even that song kicks a lot of ass but you know compared to the other upcoming singles i don't even think that intolerance was a single but compared to the other three singles from those other two albums, the opening tracks, this is fucking balls. Like, it's not, well, it's not um, balls, but it's just, it doesn't match up at all. It just doesn't. Venuma is the second track, which is everybody's least favorite track, I believe. I do kind of like the, um, it sounds kind of like Chinese, like a, a Chinese symbol, like some, you know, Chinese culture in there. It just kind of sounds uh you know ch chinese to me i guess it's kind of weird but it has a lot of like these peaceful kind of nature sounds at the beginning which i really like but i do think that the track really drags on uh, you know later on which m this album really like struggles with it has a lot of those the struggle moments and i do think that Fenuma is like the worst uh, song of of this um you know the war song with this problem, which is essentially everything. Everything has this problem that it goes on for too long. And Fenuma, you know, it had an interesting opening with that kind of uh, cultural sound the tool was going for. But I don't like how the song progresses. It, it like fucking decreases or it, you know, how, how would you say that? It de degenerates. Like with every fucking minute, it gets worse and worse, or it gets weaker and weaker. The, the opening is pretty good, I think, but then it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And I'm, I'm like, why is this not getting better? Why is this only getting worse? The, the band just goes on forever. That's the fucking problem. Maynard, you know, he sings here and there, and then the band goes into this in eternal jam session, which I just, just don't give a fuck about. So, yeah, you know, for Numa, it's pretty much the worst track on this album. It's, it's not bad. I think it used to be one of my favorites, but then I heard it again and again, and I was like, this has no replay value at all, this whole album really, so there you go. So, then we get Invincible, this is kind of like the, the counter brother of Descending, which we, which we will get to. And I think that Invincible, this was one of the tracks that Tool teased for like fucking four or five years, I think. The Adam Jones came up with the Invincible and the Descending riff. And Invincible never really struck me that much. It just went on for fucking ever. And um, yeah, and you know, the track in general just didn't speak to me at all. Um, it, it's just basically descending, but it's just without the catchy bits. And it's just like without the iconic or the iconic, the, the memorable riff, I would say. The descending riff is in my head, but the Invincible riff isn't. So I guess you can say that I was kind of, or this track was kind of invincible or invisible to me. Yeah, fucking kill me. Actually, by the way, I forgot this fucking interlude song. Uh, Le Tani contre la peur. Uh, French for litany against fear. So kind of in team with the album, I guess. 
And this song sounds fucking terrible. I hate this interlude. It's two, two minutes and 14 seconds. It's balls. It sounds bad. Uh, it sounds pretty much like a fucking 10,000 days demo tape or something. Like, you know, my least favorite song of the classic tool is like Vigente Tress, I believe. Vigente Trees. However you say that. That's like the worst tool song. Uh, but it's like an interlude, so can you really count it in? But even that song was kind of an interesting interlude because it had some really like weird vocals and it so sounded interesting to me. But it was easily the worst tool song for sure. But you know, this whole album can be on the worst list for me. So, you know, from Classic Tool, that's like the worst uh, song. So there you go. I love 10,000 Days, but. Uh, but Invincible, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I just said it already. It's just. I'm in, invisible to it. It's an invisible track. I, I couldn't care less about it. Yeah, then we have the, the brother, the, the counter brother of Invisible, Invincible, Descending. And this song is way more interesting to me. This is easily my favorite song of the album because it had a interesting riff. It has that, do, 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 you know, that riff, that bass line, I suppose. And then that, do, 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 you know, then Adam Jones kind of like, does that the, the bass tone but then with the guitar they kind of like uh, copycat each other they or they, they're just in tune with each other they're just in harmony i suppose N not in harmony that's, that's a vocal thing that's a vocal vocal thing i'm done no they, they are just you know in rhythm with each other i suppose they are just in rhythm uh so they do play off with each other really nicely the, the whole band essentially so, you know, the, uh, the tight jamming on this album is really impressive, but tight jamming, I don't give a shit about, you know, bands being tight. I do, well, I do care for some degree, you know, I don't want a band to, you know, to go to shit in like, you know, a few years, <coughs> Guns N' Roses. But, um, but, you know, but I do think that the sending or, you know, the band in general, they can be tight. I do love when tools tight, which, you know, they arguably always are. But the problem here is that, you know, the band is tight, but they're not distinct. They're not a distinct band anymore. They're just like going on forever with these tracks and I don't give a shit about it. And they just go on and on and on and on. With, with Undertow, all the songs were relatively short and they were, they were more like an alternative band than they were actually a prog band. Undertow is really the only album, I would say, you know, from the studio albums. Which you can make the argument where Tool was an alternative band. Whereas with Anima they were more complex and they kind of became prog. More so in the 2000s. With Ladder Riders they were pretty much just a fucking prog metal band or you know prog rock, prog metal. And with 10,000 Days they were pretty much like the, the most complex band from you know from their brothers, from their, uh, from their era arguably. With that level of mainstream success. So Tool really became a prog band in the 2000s. They were, you know, they were more of an alternative band in the 90s, I would say. They were prog in the 2000s. And now I would say they are uh, boring. Yeah, that's essentially what they are. They're still prog. You know, all, all these songs are 10 minutes long. But if a track is long, that doesn't mean it's good. You know, look at anything from... Well, I'm not going to mention a band because mentioning them in the same vein... Oh, that's not, yeah, that's not worthy. They're not worthy. Uh, but all this, there you go. Um, yeah, but what I'm saying here is that you have some songs, like I said, with, with those other Tool songs, Rosetta Stone, uh, Disposition, fucking, um, Third Eye, didn't say it already, 10,000 Days. All these songs are so amazing because they're like, there are only one or two tracks on those albums above the 10 minute mark, which makes them special. Whereas this album, it's all 10 minutes, except for the instrumental. I'm pretty sure I've said it already, but you know, if you forgot it, then there you go. Now we have Killing Voices, which is definitely, um, probably the most interesting song. It's not as good as Descending, I would say, but it's a bit more interesting. I really like the, the kind of, you know, the opening. Uh, it sounds really atmospheric, I think it sounds pretty interesting. I do really like that, it's, uh, it's pretty good, I think. Atmosphere is pretty interesting. I do think that the song kind of drags on, you know, toward the middle section and toward the ending, you know, it's kind of get boring. But every song on the song has a problem like that. All these songs could have been cut in half and you, 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 you would have missed a thing, so there you go. 
But as you know, if you, if you would wait for a new album for 30 years and it's only like 45 minutes, then every, everybody would be outraged. So there you go. So might as well make it 90 minutes, right? With all these dumb transitions. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot another terrible fucking interlude. Uh, Le Legion in Oculus. Uh, this song sounded even worse to me. The there These fucking interludes get worse and worse for me. Fucking terrible. Um, I hate that this song pretty much sounds like the shittiest demo tape I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I actually own I own the, the Tool demo on vinyl actually, which is like, like one of the most rarest thing ever, but it's like a bootleg, so. Is it, an, is it a legitimate thing? No, but I do own it, I do love it. Uh, and I think that all these fucking interludes fucking blow, so you know, I'm mentioning that because that, that demo album sounds better than this album, in my opinion, so there you go. Um, yeah, then we get Chocolate Chip Trip, which is one of the most, the one of the weirdest tracks I've ever heard in my life. I would say that this is the, um, after the terrible interludes and the, the lackluster Phenuma, I would say that this is the worst track of the album, because it's it sticks out like a short term, it's the instrumental, it's cut in half, as in, it's not 10 minutes long, it's only, it's not even 5 minutes long, it's 4 minutes and 48 seconds. This is Danny Carey's Moby Dick, you know, as in, it's his, it's his instrumental, it's his drum solo in a way, and I'm not sure if Tool had a, like, like a Moby Dick before this, but they probably did. And I do think that, you know, anything that Danny Carey had instrumentally on those albums is way better than this song will ever be. Uh, the title was the chocolate chip trail, like what the fuck, like yeah, I mean, you know, Danny Carey once said, like, we take our work very seriously, we just don't take ourselves seriously. I took that to heart, and that was very true for a very long time, up until this album came out, this fucking atrocious album cover, um, you know, I saw this fucking atrocious album cover, and I read this title, I was like, what the fuck? Chocolate chip trip? Are you fucking kidding me? And I and I mean the last thought is even more ridiculous, in my opinion. This is not a bad instrumental. I don't like it, but the reason I don't like it, it has this like really weird, like repetitive, noisy sounding, you know, machine in the background, which you know it doesn't end for the entire track. It starts up, and whenever it starts up, Danny Carey begins to drum. He is like a fucking robot because. He drums like a crazy man, and you know that machine in the background. This this song sounds really lifeless, really dull, and really just generic in my opinion. Well, not per se generic, but just it sounds really just lifeless to me. Like that beat in the fucking background, I hate it. It's so repetitive. It sounds so bad. The drums are not like the drums are good, but I hate that that noise in the background. Fuck that noise. It's so fucking weird. If someone would say this track isn't weird, they would be fucking lying. Weird isn't necessarily bad, but you know, for Tool, you know, they, they're weird, but they're weird in a good way. On this track, they're just weird, you know, they're bad weird, I would say. So, I'm not a huge fan of this track. After the terrible interludes and after Phenuma, this is my least favorite track of the album. <clears throat> and then we get the, the epic finale of the Tool discography, arguably if ever, I don't, maybe Tool's not gonna make another album. Danny Carey did say that you're probably gonna get a new Tool album in like five or six years, uh, you know, um, he said that and people reported that. But I highly fucking doubt that Tool will ever release another album after this fucking atrocity, in my opinion at least. Well, it's not per se an atrocity, but it's just like, after this lackluster, mediocre, over bloated fucking album, I don't think they're gonna release a new album, you know, ever. I don't hope so, at least, because they, they disappointed me so hard with this album. T Tempest, you know, it's good. I do like it. It's not one of my favorites, because it's 15 fucking minutes long. The longest Tool song ever which I'm not a huge fan of per se, but I do I do like it because it it is pretty electric, it is pretty, you know, heavy in a way. It is a pretty like ballsy track. I do like the riffs a lot. I do think that this track is, you know, pretty redeeming for the most part. But you know, it does go on for another fucking eight minutes. I was pretty satisfied with this song in the first six, seven minutes long, 
whenever you know it's kicked in and whenever it's really like um just took you grabbed you by the balls and really went with it but then it went on for another like fucking six five minutes and i was like can this album end please i'm so done please make it stop and it just went on and on and on and i was like it's not it's not a bad track but it's just just like uh make it fucking stop and yeah that's essentially my opinion on this album it's not you know it's not bad it's not terrible at least uh but this is really lackluster all the tracks go on forever and by the way fuck mocking bees Mocking beat is like the worst thing ever. It it's meaningless. Tempest ends on a pretty, I would say, on a good note, and then you get fucking mocking beat, which is like, it's so fucking pointless. Why are these interludes here? They're, they sound so bad. Everything sounds like a fucking demo tape to me, or all these interludes sounds sound like a fucking demo tape to me. And I mean, tool can sound great on that de on, on demo. They sounded great on 72826, which is their, their demo album. They sound great on that album, but why do they sound so shit on there? Because they're aging, they're, they're old, they're, they, have, they, they, they sat on this too long. That's the problem here. Um, I, don't, I don't hate Tool. I love this band. I, I fucking adore them. So this hurts me to say, but this is not a good album. You know, I love... You know, I fucking own their demo album on vinyl. I, I think I love this band. I own Opiate on vinyl. I own Undertone on that shit. I own Alma. I own Lateralis. I own 10,000 Days. I own all of their albums because they're fucking great. I have Saliva on like a videotape, but you know, I, I can't play that because I don't have a VHS or like a video recorder. Uh, I have it on CD, I also have it on vinyl, so I am a huge Tool fan, Tool is one of my favorite bands ever, so this really hurts me to say, but this album is balls. What made Tool such a special band? I, I already said this two times, but Tool completely forgot who they were. They were a tight, distinct band with great singles that grabbed you and you know were really unforgettable, had great clips. Didn't go on for too long. Tool had, you know, I said this, I said this in my original review as well. Tool has this perfect fringe line. That's why they're kind of like an unlikely MTV band. Tool has this perfect fringe line of like they are a prog band, but you know they're not necessarily like a three and a half minute three chord like pop rock band. They are this perfect fringe band in the middle that has songs spanning from five six to seven eight minutes. They're not necessarily prog but they're not like you know generic three minute rock songs they're just in a league of their own they have that really like that really uh narrow middle section of them which they perfectly fitted in they were that fringe line of like they are prog but they're not like you know your conventional rock band they really had that perfect fringe line they had songs like the grudge schism Par parabola Fucking Lateralis, nine minutes long. Everything from Lateralis, essentially. Sting Fist, fucking Anima, 40, 46 and 2. Very unconventional song, but they were six, seven minutes long. So, you know, they were, you know, they were for the radio, essentially. They were radio hits. But, you know, they also had kind of like a prog aesthetic. They had that prog edge in there, which made the band special. And I think that the band really like dropped their distinct quality for this album because they were like, we need to make everything 10 minutes long because there were some jokes that, you know, people think, oh, Tool makes long songs, but Swans makes way longer songs. You know, their songs are twice as long. So maybe Tool got pissed off at that. They were like, hey, we're a prog band too. We're, we're legit. So we're going to make a whole album with 10 minute tracks. But they did, they did that here and I'm like, yeah, no, don't don't do this again. Uh, by the way, I hate Swans, fucking hate them. So you know, I still I probably still like this album more than any Swans album. Fuck Swans, but I'm mentioning them because Swans has like like really long songs, whereas Tool has like you know they have seven, eight, nine minute uh, songs. There you go. So they completely threw their perfect formula out of the window. They're like seven, eight, nine minute uh, catchy, distinct radio hit singles they threw that shit out the window and they gave us this and i'm like yeah no 
Uh, my rating for this album is a 4.9. I don't, I don't like this album. I most likely won't ever listen to this album again. I've heard it twice now. Um, you know, I do like the sending. The sending is a good track, but I'd rather listen to like more Tool Archive. You know, um, live performances of them teasing that shit up rather than the studio version. They, 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 they fucking sound the same. They, they're one and the same. It's almost like the live version in a way. So, I don't, yeah, I don't like this album at all. I originally gave this album an 8.6, so I guess I kind of cut the album rating in half almost. Gave it an 8.6, I wasn't happy with it, and then I, you know, I'm reviewing it now, 4.9, and I'm pretty happy with that. Funny fact, <coughs> fucking hell, funny fact, I actually gave this album a 0 0.1 rating higher than the Eric Clapton album. That's fucking offensive. This does kind of hurt me because I do love I do love Tool. I own everything from them on vinyl except for this album, and I won't get this album. It's fucking expensive online, and it's not even that good. Other albums are really expensive for me, but that album is fucking great. I love that album. Ten Thousand Days was relatively expensive, and I still got that because it's a great album. When we're getting this album, though, it's not that good. So um, yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, I pretty much agree with Anthony Fantano on his review. Yeah, I could have said that at the beginning, but if I did, if I said that, then you would have known the rating already. You would have known my favorite and least favorite tracks. Although Descending is kind of a personal favorite for, my, for, for me, but I've heard that track for like two or three years, like T, uh, like T Stub on Tool Archive. So I, I knew that song, uh, but the rest of these songs I couldn't care less about. So there you go. That's my opinion on the album. Um, very unprofet or very controversial opinion right here, but I don't like the new Tool album. Um, and that you know, it is a painful thing for me to say because I love this band. They're like one of my all-time favorite bands, and I was really excited for this album, but they really let me down. Whenever I saw that album cover, I was like not feeling it at all. I didn't listen to this album for like three weeks. It was out in August 30th. Um, yeah, it was out then. And I did, just didn't listen to it for three weeks. I was like, this is not gonna be good. Listen to it and I was like, yeah, it's not that good to be honest. So there you go. That's my opinion on this album. Let me know what you think about it in, in the comments down below. Really disappointing for me. The band was so amazing before this. What fucking happened to Tool? I guess, you know, 13 years just, you know, makes you an old and kind of like, you know, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, makes you a band of the past, I suppose. Tool, tool, tool just waited too long and, you know, it really shows on this album. So there you go, that's my review of this album. Like and subscribe to the channel for future lives as well. Let me know what you want to see in an upcoming video. Did you love this album? Did you hate this album? Personally, I was in the middle. I, you know, I, I more tend to hate, but I don't hate anything tool related. But, th but this thing comes kind of close. It's, it's more, I just dislike this album. I don't hate it, but it's so underwhelming. It's not good. So there you go. That's my opinion on it. Um, let me know what you think about it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Rip tool.